Let's learn some more about ATP. ATP is the energy currency of cells. You probably know that you get energy from your food. You have to eat foods and especially carbohydrates are what give you energy. You use your food to make ATP. So the food energy is converted into ATP energy. And then ATP is what powers the processes in your cells. So let's look some more at this relationship between food and ATP and just how it is that you use your food to make ATP. ATP is adenosine triphosphate. So it has three phosphates. And this last one here, I made this kind of curly spring-like, this is a high energy bond. So ATP, adenosine triphosphate. The A is the adenosine and you have three phosphates. The third one is attached with a high energy bond. So when you have work that needs to be done in your cell, you just break that third phosphate off. So if you break it off, that energy is released. And this energy does work in the cell. So after you break it off, what you are left with is an adenosine with two phosphates. This is a DP, the D for dye. And then you have just a phosphate by itself over here. The next thing now is to reattach it. So now your body puts that phosphate back. It creates a new high energy bond. So you reattach by creating a new high energy bond. And this is where food comes in. You use hydrogen atoms from your food to do this. And then you have another ATP that is ready to go release its energy and do work in your cell. You can kind of think of this like your cell phone. Here is your cell phone with a full battery. You're at 100%. As you go through the day, you use your battery. So now here is your cell phone with a low battery or a dead battery, right? You know how the little battery thing turns red and it says warning, low battery? That's like ADP. You don't just throw your phone away at this point. You plug it back in and you recharge it. So this is where you would plug your phone in to your charger. So the charger in this case is like the hydrogen atoms from your food. And then after you plug it into the charger, you have a full battery again. So the basics of the ATP cycle, you have a cell, here's a cell, and you have some ATP. You have some work here that needs to be done. So this is some work for your cell to do. So the ATP comes over to where the work needs to be done. You break that phosphate off and you release the energy and then you are left with a DP and that P by itself. And the energy does the work. 
Then you have a part of your cell called the mitochondria. That ADP and PI go to the mitochondria, and that is where they are reattached. So the mitochondria is like the outlet in your wall where you're plugging your phone charger in. And they come out as ATP, fully charged. So this is like the dead battery, and it's going to the mitochondria, and here is you have a fresh full battery. So now let's see how food plays into this. You eat food, and that food is digested, and the nutrients are put into your blood. So here's your blood. In your blood, you're going to have glucose, which is C6H12O6. So you get lots of nutrients. Glucose is the main carbohydrate that your body wants when you eat starch or sugar or any other form of carbohydrate your body converts it to glucose glucose is blood sugar the glucose comes into your cell once it's in there you begin breaking it down it has 12 hydrogens you're going to extract those hydrogens out so the glucose enters your cell You break it to extract the hydrogens. Then those hydrogens are in your mitochondria and you use them to reattach the P to the ADP. So your mitochondria uses the hydrogen to reattach the P to the ADP and you get ATP. So thinking like the mitochondria is like the outlet and the hydrogen is like the charger cord. Once you extract the hydrogens out, you have the six carbons and the six oxygens left over from the glucose. So you also have to get rid of those. So you probably know that you need oxygen. Everybody knows you need oxygen, but most people can't tell you why. I mean, think about it. Every one of you knows that you would die in only a few minutes if you were deprived of oxygen. It's so important. You could only go a couple minutes without it, right? Water, you can go like three days. Food, you can go weeks. But oxygen, it's a matter of minutes. So what is oxygen doing? Why do you need it so bad? You need oxygen for this process of making ATP. The oxygen comes in and it combines with that carbon and that oxygen left over. Notice you have six carbons and six oxygens, a one-to-one -one ratio. If you bring some more oxygen in and add to that, you get carbon dioxide, which is a waste product that you can put in your blood and you go to your lungs and you exhale. So the carbon dioxide that you're exhaling, so this will then be exhaled by the lungs, starts as glucose and oxygen in your blood. The glucose and the oxygen in your blood go into your cell. You break the glucose down, you get the hydrogen out. You use the hydrogen to make your ATP. Then the oxygen combines with the carbon and oxygen from the glucose and makes carbon dioxide. That carbon dioxide goes from your cell back to your blood. Your blood takes it to your lungs where then your lungs exhale it. You also have these hydrogens left over. Once you have used the hydrogens to make ATP, you're done with them. So some of this oxygen also goes in here and it combines with that hydrogen. Well, think about what do you get when you put oxygen and water together? You get H2O. Oh, I'm sorry. I said oxygen and water together. I should have said oxygen and hydrogen together. You get water. So you get water. 
And this, because it is made by your cells, is called metabolic water. So some of the water in your blood is metabolic water. It's the oxygen that you inhaled combined with the hydrogen you extracted from glucose. Now this isn't enough water to keep you alive. You still have to drink water, but it's a small portion of the water that's in your blood is your metabolic water. So we can summarize this. We put all this together. We can say C6H12O6. That's your glucose. You get this by eating carbohydrates. Plus 6O2. That's oxygen that you breathe in through your lungs. Those things go to your cell. So it would be six oxygens here that are going from your blood into your cell. And these are also going to be six. They get into your cell. Your cell breaks down the glucose and extracts the hydrogen. So you're going to use the hydrogen to make ATP. Then the oxygen is going to combine with the carbon and, hydro, carbon and oxygen left over from the glucose. And you're going to get six CO2. That's what three of the oxygens will do. So you've got six oxygens here. Three of them will combine with the carbon and oxygen and give you six CO2. Then you will have the hydrogen, after you have used it to make ATP, will combine with the other three oxygens and you'll get six metabolic waters. And when you do this process, you get 36 ATP and you get your body heat. This is where body heat comes from, this process of making energy. So a couple of things to think about. Remember we talked about you have to have oxygen to survive. Well, the reason you need oxygen to stay alive is you need ATP in order for your cells to keep working. If you didn't have oxygen, you could still make some ATP. If there's no oxygen, you do a process called fermentation. You may have heard of this, like making beer and wine is fermentation. Uh, humans can also do fermentation. Now it's a little different. When yeast do fermentation, they make alcohol. That's how you get beer and wine. Humans don't do that. When humans do fermentation, you get lactic acid. But if there's no oxygen, you do fermentation, and you only get two ATP from this process, and you also get lactic acid. So if you didn't have oxygen, you would only get two ATP. That's not enough to keep your cells functioning. So that's why you would die without oxygen, is you wouldn't be able to make enough ATP to keep your cells functioning. Another thing to think about, the body heat. This is why you get hot when you exercise. When you exercise, you're using more ATP. So you have to do this process called cellular respiration more which means you make more heat. Every time you do this process and you make your 36 ATP, you get some heat. So if you're exercising, you're doing this more, you're making more heat. So there is an overview of ATP and how you use food to make ATP and the chemicals that you get from this.